Hey everyone, welcome back to Prime News. It's been a while, hasn't it? You know what? It's also been a while. It's almost been one year since the last time we had a Mario Day. That is right, March 10th is coming up and Nintendo has reminded us to celebrate it as March 10th abbreviated Mar 10 looks like Mario so it is Mario Day and Nintendo is celebrating it by allowing us to download a bunch of games from the eShop on 3DS, Wii U and Switch that are Mario games for a discount. Some of the discounts are actually pretty decent so I would suggest that on Mario Day and then obviously for a few days after you check out the eShop on those platforms and you get the games that you are interested in. Personally I probably won't partake in the sale just because I'm not even going to be in town uh, during the sale period it's going to be an interesting week next week but uh hey whatever prime news is back right that's more exciting to me so a big story this week is actually about ea and how they are not going to have a press conference at e3 this year now they are still going to have a presence they're going to be doing ea play which they have done for a couple years now where it's more of an open public event that you can go to and try out some of their games and to be honest this might actually be a good thing even though for some people this signifies a further degradation of E3. Even though E3 itself is an actual conference, not like a press conference that usually doesn't even take place where E3 is, but whatever. I understand the importance of those press conferences for a lot of people. EA, however, usually has a pretty bad press conference every year. I gotta say, I don't remember the last time there's been good crowd reaction at an EA press conference at E3. So honestly, their biggest games, like Dragon Age as an example, are probably best shown off at Microsoft's conference. I was gonna say at Sony's conference, but they're also not there. And uh, I mean, maybe some of these games will be showed off in Nintendo's little digital event. I don't know. That's just me guessing and spitballing and maybe hoping for some EA support, specifically for Dragon Age and Madden. But uh, yeah, uh, they're not going to have a press conference. They're still going to have a presence. Uh, and who knows? We'll see what happens, see how many other games end up showing up on the actual show floor outside of EA Play, uh, maybe on uh, at, at Microsoft's Theater, you know, where they, they've been hosting stuff lately for them. So I don't know. We'll have to wait and see what comes of this. But uh, it's another one that bites the dust. But as far as we're still aware... Microsoft is still doing one. Nintendo still has their digital event. We know Ubisoft is going to be there. Digital Devolver actually announced that they're going to be doing a press conference this year. Um, and Bethesda and all that stuff. So uh, there's still going to be plenty of press conferences. But two major ones have bitten the dust in Sony and EA. But at least EA is still going to be at E3. Whereas Sony is just a complete no-show. Uh, probably as they're preparing to announce and launch their next generation system. Uh Basically, the PlayStation experience towards the end of this year is going to be pretty crazy if you happen to be into Sony systems. Our next story is actually a really weird announcement. Nintendo announced Labo VR this week. Uh, yeah, that's right. VR is coming to Switch through Labo. Can you say, hello, Google Cardboard? But more, because Google Cardboard is just a headset, whereas you're not only building a headset, you're building an elephant? You're building a gun that shoots from your nose? I, what? You're you're building a camera. I guess that's kind of cool. Uh, Pokemon Snap better be coming. It's it's not. But I honestly, the weirdest thing about this announcement is that Nintendo didn't release a trailer to actually show off what the games are and how this stuff works. We just have some pictures, and we know that it's going to be seventy nine ninety nine for the full Toy Con for. Labo VR kit, otherwise there's a starter kit that just has uh, the, the blaster and the goggles, and then there's two variety kits as well. The starter kit's going to be 40 bucks. each variety kit is 20 bucks, and obviously altogether that's 80 or you just get the big pack for 80 So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a thing that exists, and there's a lot of people going both ways on it. I'm just going to kind of leave it be because we just don't know enough. Um, Nintendo, we need a trailer. That's just, we need a trailer. Today, Kirby's Extra Epic Yarn released, and uh, yeah, it's a game I've already played and beaten because it's from the Wii. However, uh, it is nice that if you are still owning the 3DS that there is a new game coming out for you. Uh, if you haven't played Kirby's Epic Yarn, this is a great time to pick it up. If you do own a 3DS, it is a fantastic game. Do not be put off by the fact you can't die and it's a yarn thing. That was kind of the criticism of it back in the day. It's actually a really fantastic game, and honestly, if you are a Kirby fan, you need to play this because it is, I'm going to be honest, one of the better Kirby games we have had 
in probably you know a decade plus. So uh, I would definitely check it out if I were you guys and you haven't played it yet and you happen to still own a 3DS. Uh, it would have been cooler to me, honestly, if they would have like brought it into HD and brought it to Switch. But uh, I mean, I guess 3DS is where you're getting this stuff, like Luigi's Mansion and Kirby's Extra Epic Yarn. And um, I, I, why, why? Speaking of blasts from the past, Turok Dinosaur Hunter. That's right, that N64 original is coming to Nintendo Switch on March 18th through a remaster. Now, you might wonder, why? Why? Well, it's already actually been remastered on PC, so it appears that we're just getting the PC remaster on Switch, and it's coming to other platforms as well. So, uh, yeah, they're releasing it March 18th. I don't know, I'm not even sure how much it costs. I, I couldn't see a price when I was initially looking up this news. doesn't really matter to me. I'm not going to pick it up, but for those of you that want to relive the Turok Dinosaur Hunter days, back when Turok was actually, believe it or not, when Turok started out, it was a really good game. A lot of the follow-up games weren't. But this one, this was the good one. So uh, if you want some dinosaur hunting action, heck, if it's if it's cheap enough and in your wheelhouse, why not check the eShop on March 18th and, and pick it up? So to me, this story is actually the biggest one of the week because of how big a fan I am of the original, and that is that Octopath Traveler is getting a prequel and a sequel. The weird thing is the prequel is only coming to phones on Android and iOS, whereas the sequel is coming to game consoles. That's all they're willing to confirm anyways. Now, obviously, we assume that that's going to include Switch because that's where the original was. But the interesting thing is when they say game consoles, is, is the sequel also coming to Xbox, PlayStation, PC? I don't know. Nobody knows. Because now that the prequel is going to mobile devices, it's very clear that they're probably going to try to expand Octopath beyond just being on Switch, but it'll probably still always sell best on Switch. I also think the prequel itself, they showed off a trailer for it that you're already watching on screen, that should just like be like on Switch. I don't know why they're not putting it on Switch, if I'm being completely honest. Maybe it's because it's a microtransaction fest and they don't really think that fits on Switch. I don't know, so maybe they're saving us some time there. But uh, whatever, a sequel's in the works, and I couldn't be more happy to me. Octopath Traveler is potentially... Uh, right now, it's number two for me, but potentially one of the best uh, games on Switch, exclusive-wise. Uh, for me, it's Mario Plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle, and then, then Octopath, then Odyssey, but uh, we'll see. I have to finish Octopath, and now I have an extra motivation to finish it, knowing that a sequel's in the works. Probably a, a, a game to come next year, so uh, look forward to that. A YouTuber by the name of Brad Sams has talked this past week about how Xbox Game Pass is not coming to Nintendo Switch in the near future. Now, uh, Brad Sams, you might look at his channel, he's got a few thousand subs, why should you believe him? Well, he's actually a well-known Xbox insider that has gotten a lot of stuff about Xbox correct in the past and is now at the forefront of the new Xbox rumors for their next generation of systems. Now, the thing is about him is he's gotten a lot of stuff right in the past, so this is why people are starting to pay a bit more attention to what Brad Sams has to say on this. And he in the past did also mention how Game Pass and, and xCloud and stuff like that could be coming to Switch, uh, according to his sources. But his sources have informed him that Game Pass is not coming to Switch in the near term, which would mean it's not coming this year. Now, he did note that just because Game Pass isn't coming doesn't mean xCloud isn't coming. He said that Microsoft clearly wants Game Pass to be tied with xCloud and be on everything, but for now, it's like xCloud's going to be trying to be put on everything, and then Game Pass might come down the line for Switch. So, essentially... If you're looking for anything to land on Switch this year or early next year, it would be the xCloud, which is Microsoft's streaming service, and then Game Pass could be something that gets tied with it down the road. Now, this obviously has nothing to do with Xbox Live coming to Switch. He actually reported earlier that Xbox Live was going to come to Switch, so Xbox Live and xCloud seem to be the two things we should be looking forward to and expecting the most, whereas Game Pass is something that might be coming to Switch, but it's going to be further down the road, like end of next year, 2021, somewhere in that. Microsoft is probably still working out the kinks to make something like that work, and it's much easier right now for them to focus on xCloud, since that's going to be part of their next-gen stuff, and then also focus on Xbox Live, since that gets them more money. So yeah, I think this uh, makes a lot of sense, at least for now, to stagger this stuff out. And uh, yeah, for now, Game Pass, you know, we got excited about it, but it looks like it might not be coming to Switch. Again, this is all rumors and speculation, so... You know, believe what you want to believe, I guess, at this point. Uh, we do know Xbox Live is coming because Microsoft said as much, but the rest, I don't know. You be the judge. So this is actually a bit of a special week because this past weekend, specifically on Sunday, the Nintendo Switch and Nintendo Prime turned two years old. That's right, folks. I'm finally old enough to stop drinking out of a bottle and start having some milk. 
That's right. We have moved on to non-breast milk. Yes. Okay. Uh, nobody cares. I understand that. I mean, you probably care about the switch turn too. That might be something you care about, but nobody cares about me. I'm, I guess I'm used to it. I mean. <sighs> Hello darkness, my old friend. So at Jared Oya on Twitter has stated that Persona 5S is coming to Nintendo Switch and PlayStation 4 this fall and that we're going to learn about it before May of, well, obviously this year. And the reason that people are kind of listening to him is because he was actually talking about Persona 5R long before Persona 5R was talked about by any other sources or was actually confirmed. So he was essentially the originating source on Persona 5R, which is legit and is real and was already talked about, released, all that great stuff. So uh, it appears that at least when it comes to Persona, he probably has some sort of connection or he just got lucky. I don't know how you get lucky getting the exact name right. I, I, he had to have heard it from somewhere. So anyways, Persona 5S, don't know what that means. Don't know if it means it's a smaller version of the game. Don't know, like, I don't know. I don't know much about Persona, so it's probably just like an extra version maybe it's like the dragon quest 11 extra thing they're doing on switch i have no idea but uh i mean with joker coming to smash is it really much of a surprise there have been kind of rumors floating around about persona 5 for i don't know since joker was announced so uh sure persona 5 on switch i'll i'll bite <laughs> And the last story for this week is one that uh, I don't like, but we'll mention it anyways because it's a thing that happened. Uh, this isn't a rumor. This is directly from the director of Devil May Cry 5, which also came out this week. Congratulations to all of you folks out there that are probably playing it this weekend, maybe even right now. Well, Devil May Cry 5, the director stated uh, that it's not on Switch because they did not have dev kits at the time they started development, which would make sense. Devil May Cry 5 usually has like a three, four year development cycle that would predate, you know, being Switch dev kits. So, okay, fine. Uh, but he did say it could come to Switch and then it might come to Switch. However, it might come to Switch if Switch owners buy Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen. That's right. You must buy a game from Capcom that's completely unrelated and a completely different genre to prove to the director of Devil May Cry 5 that you actually want to buy Devil May Cry 5. Because buying an RPG that barely anyone knows about that didn't sell well on other platforms is suddenly going to tell you how well a completely different game with a better known IP name is going to sell on Switch. You probably should have just released an older Devil May Cry game if you wanted to test the waters. Or you probably should have just said absolutely nothing when people asked you about a Switch one and just said, ah, yeah, we don't have any plans for it right now. Some are using this as a theory, though, that this means Capcom's already working on it because they've said stuff like this in the past, and then we've gotten the game even if the other game they mentioned didn't sell that well, and it's just a marketing ploy. And this all might mean a whole bunch of hullabaloo and nothing. I just don't like it. I think it's dumb. I don't think you should ever tell people to buy a completely different game to get another game. I think that's just a dumb thing to say. Um, it's best to just not say anything at all. But uh, I don't know. Maybe they thought, you know that, that, that saying, you know, if you don't have anything nice, don't say anything at all. Maybe they thought that this was nice, that uh, we were supposed to applaud it. Yeah, that just happened. Anyways, folks, I want to thank you for tuning into this episode of Prime News. It's been a long time, but it feels good to be back doing an episode like this. Not a lot of comedy this time around. It's been kind of... Uh, uh, a long week. I got so many videos in the works to get done for this weekend uh, where I'm going to be out of town because we're going on a little family vacation that my kids aren't even aware of yet. So it's going to be a little surprise for them. It's going to be a lot of fun. Can't wait. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this Prime News video. Enjoyed all the videos this week, this weekend. And you know what? Um, for me personally, I'll see you guys on Monday. But uh, you'll probably see me in some other videos over the weekend that I already have planned and or are currently in editing. Thank you for tuning in. And uh, I'll catch you guys next week.